What is up, everybody? Glad to be back with you on this Friday for your Jasmine update. The big news of this past week, we had the uh, very first ambassador call uh, where the announcement was made of the Jasmine blockchain coming soon. Okay. Jasmine blockchain coming soon. This was the big announcement. So from that, uh, the Jasmine team went ahead and posted this Medium article right here that I kind of briefly wanted to go through. So we've now got this fancy new logo here for the Jasmine blockchain. And in our relentless pursuit of democratizing data and ensuring genuine user rights, we recognize that technological innovation is the key to moving forward. Therefore, we are thrilled to announce that Jasmine has officially launched the Jasmine chain project. So the Jasmine blockchain, right? Now, some background here. So with the rapid growth of data and increasing concerns about personal privacy, Jasmine is committed to transparency and democratization of data, right? As a leader in the Web3 field, Jasmine has made outstanding efforts and contributions. We launched the world's first blockchain PC, which is 100% true, partnership with Avita, uh, creating an environment for individuals to truly own and control their data. Through these efforts, we have successfully enabled individuals to control their data, right? However, with the growth of our community and the deepening of digitization, the scenarios of data use and exchange are also increasing, right? To meet these new demands and provide more efficient and convenient data democracy services, Jasmine has realized the need to introduce more advanced technological solutions. Therefore, they're announcing an Ethereum layer two blockchain, okay? So what is the Jasmine chain, right? So with a large number of users using the um, developed uh, blockchain PC, uh, we anticipated rapid growth in the number of data storage users leading to a significant increase in data types and volumes. The growth not only forms a vast economic field, but also allows us to uh, price personal data through a suitable reward system. Currently, users can freely provide or grant their data and retrieve it if necessary. However, with the growth of the data volumes, Jasmine may face scalability and performance issues. Okay. Now, I'm going to be breaking all this down here in one second, but I just kind of want to cover the, the basics here, right? So we're talking about efficiency. We're talking about scalability and performance issues. Uh, in addition, uh, users' usage costs may increase, uh, possibly affecting the liquidity and accessibility of data. Can't have that, right? So to overcome these challenges and continue to provide quality services to the community, we see layer two as a more uh, more than a choice, but a necessity. And I would agree with that. By introducing Jasmine Chain, we can maintain more efficient data transaction speeds, reduce transaction costs, and ensure the highest security for users when transacting, storing, and managing their data. That's it in a nutshell, right? That kind of says just about everything you need to know of the why, okay? So when transacting, storing, managing their data, the highest security for those users, okay? Reducing costs, speed, right? Data transaction speeds. Um, that's really what it all comes down to here on, on why this um, Jasmine chain is being uh, put forward, right? So features of it. So we're excited about the uh, open future of Jasmine chain, which combines a range of cutting edge design solutions, right? So we have uh, account abstraction supporting rollup layer two. So our current layer two development employs OP stack-based technology and natively integrates an account abstraction-like system at the chain level. This design allows uh, contracts to define their transaction validation logic, providing developers with greater uh, flexibility. Um, for users, this means a near web two interaction experience on Jasmine chain, significantly reducing friction with layer two interactions. Right, that's really important while well, ensuring 100% compatibility with the existing Ethereum virtual machine EVM standards. Web3 operating system integrated with Jasmine AI engine. This is really important as well, right? 
Our layer two goes beyond data processing. Well, the Jasmine AI engine, uh, with the Jasmine AI engine, we envision a genuine AI-driven Web3 operating system. The system will fundamentally change the perception of the Ethereum chain account system, transforming it uh, from a mere calculator to a more intelligent computer, right? This is where platinum data comes in specific to Jasmine. This transformation means that all interactions will become more modular, efficient, and intelligent. Our goal is to provide users with more intuitive data processing methods while reducing the threshold for interacting with on-chain personal data. 3.3, uh, so precise services based on DID and user data, right? So to better capture and process user data, we have uh, closely integrated with Jasmine IoT devices, ensuring that account ownership always belongs to the user. That's important, right? That's one of the hallmarks of this idea. Uh, you control your own data. This allows users to trade freely with data demand demanders, realizing the true value of personal data. Through native decentralized identifier in the account system, we have separated personal identity from data ownership and usage rights, giving data uh, greater potential, right? This means that on Jasmine Chain, everyone can have a unique identity and truly return data control to the users, ensuring equal access to the global economic system, right? Now, uh, how Jasmine Chain can further democratize data? So first, uh, Jasmine Chain provides a cryptographically secure decentralized environment, allowing users to decide how to share and exchange data without fear of misuse by third parties. That's absolutely critical, and that's a huge problem that we have today. Second, through the decentralized identifier, everyone can have a unique identity, right? So anon anonymity, an an anon anonymity. I don't know why I can't say this. An anonymous ID. <laughs> there we go. And then finally, uh, through Jasmine Chain's economic mechanism, users can not only gain economic rewards uh, from data transactions, but also earn more rewards by trading their own and others' data, right? So earning rewards. This new economic model allows everyone to benefit from their data rather than letting a few large companies monopolize all the profits, which is how it is today with GAFA, okay? Google, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, et cetera. In summary, Jasmine Chain represents the future of data democratization. It's a system that allows everyone to participate fairly and benefit, right? We believe as more people begin to use Jasmine Chain, uh, the process of data democratization can be further realized. Now here's the conclusion in the next steps, right? So Jasmine Chain is not just an upgrade, it represents our firm commitment to data democratization. This is a critical domino, right? Now we firmly believe that everyone should control their data and further users can monetize their personal data. Jasmine Chain will make this vision a reality. For Web2 users, we have built a bridge to enter the Web3 world in a familiar way while enjoying complete ownership and usage rights of their data, turning it into real digital asset. For Web2 companies uh, wanting to access user information, Jasmine provides an information source based on user identity and behavior data, allowing businesses to interact more precisely and valuably, valuably with users. So. For Web3 users, Jasmine Chain's native account abstraction support provides seamless interaction possibilities between Jasmine Chain and the Ethereum ecosystem, right? Remember that the existing Jasmine coin is within the Ethereum ecosystem. It is an ERC20 token. You can see what it's doing if you go to Etherscan, all right? So combined with Jasmine's underlying asset potential, we are confident in providing a richer, more robust and appealing ecosystem for the entire Web3 community. So we're excited about the future of Jasmine Chain. The team is working diligently on development and we will announce more about Jasmine Chain in the near future. These are all the deets that we got for now, all right? That's it. Now, I seem to have inadvertently opened Pandora's box, okay? And, you know, I guess uh, perhaps this is by uh, getting the cart ahead of the horse 
a little bit, which is, which is a true statement. Um, perhaps with a little pure speculation mixed with the fact that now I'm an ambassador. Okay. So as an ambassador, the only information that I have had is what's right in front of you uh, with this. I don't have anything more than that. I have had no conversations with any way officially tied to the team more than this. All right. This is it. So I did a post and this is that particular post that seems to have opened Pandora's box. So I'm going to read it. So I said, the official announcement is the launch of the Jasmine blockchain and Ethereum level two solution. I view similar to Polygon Matic. Uh, the way I explain this, let me, let me just pause there is that Polygon Matic is a level two solution that increases throughput on Ethereum. It's all it does, right? So think of Ethereum like a pipe. There's only so much that can go through that size pipe at any one time. What um, Polygon Matic does is it increases the pipe. Okay, so it makes it larger, uh, therefore increasing uh, TPS, which is transactions per second. Um, think of it like this. If you have a car that's base grade, standard, et cetera, that's your car. Um, something like a level two solution is you decide to add a cold air intake. You decide some sort of enhancement to the engine, whatever this might be. Now your car is faster. It's more efficient. That's all this does. That's a level two, right? So I said, uh, which was increased, uh, Polygonmatic was done to increase throughput transactions. So in the case of Jasmine, um, I think this is being done for business to business transactions at scale. Uh, it is also being done for the reasons of the blockchain PC and all of the transactions that could be coming via that, especially if that idea really takes off. Uh, now, Jasmine Coin, getting back to what I said here, was launched on Ethereum originally in partnership with Centrality. So Jasmine had a partner, a company named Centrality. Um, Think of the launch of the Jasmine blockchain as the first necessary domino, as I mentioned earlier, right? So Jasmine Lab and Jasmine Grant can only make sense to develop the ecosystem with Jasmine blockchain in place, because otherwise, what are you developing? Nothing. There's nothing to develop, okay? I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in one second. I'm, I'm going to break down everything I said here, okay? So soon to be followed by the Jasmine Super Wallet, which enables your community engagement, essentially, with your various functions. Uh, eventually, we land on the data exchange. This is the thing that matters to everybody who holds this coin is the data exchange, right? Because when the data exchange goes live, uh, that's where they use the, quote, access token, Jasmine. Uh, to get access to data, they lock it up, and then, therefore, the supply becomes deflationary. This is the whole point. Uh, the data exchange, as far as we've ever been told, uh, is, is on... Is, is on the docket to launch in the fourth quarter. Uh, we've never been told there's a delay, uh, that it's ahead of schedule, behind schedule. Current status, I don't know, okay? Uh, even as an ambassador, I do not know what the status of the data exchange is yet. These are questions that hopefully we'll find out soon as we uh, have more engagement with the team, all right? Now, I see the official launch Here's a statement that threw everyone off. Of the Jasmine blockchain is setting the groundwork for all development moving forward. Personally, I'm curious if we may see a native Jasmine coin in the future. Uh, as other projects that have started on Ethereum and later created their own blockchain have done. That's it, right? It's a simple question. I'm curious, right? Uh, that question is not an official statement. It's not representative of the company or anything they've ever said. That's simply me asking a question of, I wonder if a native Jasmine token will come next, okay? Why do I wonder that? Well, let's get to that part. So let me go ahead and pull up. Um, where is it? Here we go. Here is the... Let's see, let's scooch me over there. Okay, here we go. So I decided to put this onto Excel to try and break it down for you all a little bit. And that's what I'm going to cover right now. So first of all, 
blockchain, okay? We have two blockchains that we're talking about. We're talking about Ethereum and we're talking about Jasmine. Jasmine started on the Ethereum blockchain. We're, we're in Ethereum land, okay? That's where we've always been is, on, is in Ethereum, okay? Uh, the idea of this Jasmine blockchain is new, all right? What's the throughput? What's the scalability? What are the transactions per second? Uh, there's a couple different sites you can go out to right now to see what the current transactions per second are on Ethereum. And roughly it's give or take 30. Sometimes it's a little higher than 30. A lot of times it's a little lower. 30 transactions per second. Now this is an improvement from where Bitcoin started, which I think I want to say was like seven. Uh, so if, if you compare it like that, it's four times greater, right? Uh, a little higher than that. That's, that's great. Uh, maybe even sometimes five times greater than what Bitcoin could originally do, okay? Now I'm not talking about the Bitcoin Lightning Network, all right? I'm talking just about Bitcoin originally. Um, now in comparison, for throughput, transactions per second, there are numerous other blockchains out there today that have a transactions per second of um, 50,000, right? Solana. Um, I think it was uh, Trius. Uh, that one has uh, 300,000, okay? Pokedex, 500,000 transactions per second. Um, and so on and so forth. Basically, every, every new blockchain that comes out has an even greater claim to TPS, transactions per second. What is a transaction? Well, a transaction is simply any touch of that blockchain, right? Any touch, any movement. That, that's a transaction, okay? Going back to the pipe example, uh, the pipe is only so large when it can do 30 transactions per second, right? Now, think of how the pipe expands if it goes to 50,000, right? What is the actual Jasmine blockchain transaction per second number? We don't know. No one knows yet. I don't know what it is. It's a great question to ask in an AMA, which I will gladly ask. What, are the, what, what is the TPS? What is the throughput for the Jasmine blockchain, okay? If I had to guess, uh, just by what I know of their interactions with companies like Transcosmos, massive, large company, 50,000 plus employees, um, their goal of 107 million users, the blockchain PC itself, you have to have one heck of a lot more than 30 transactions per second. So basically what has happened here, what has occurred is what happens to every project that starts on Ethereum. It's a great place to start, but you quickly outgrow it, okay? Um, it's no different than, let's say, you start off in a 1,200 square foot house, your family grows, and you no longer fit, right? Now you need 1,700 square feet. Now you need 1,900 square feet. Now you need 2,500 square feet. My house that I live in is over 3,000 square feet, right? We, we've expanded. Okay, we've gotten bigger. <laughs> this just happens, right? It's a natural progression over time. Things grow, things develop, okay? Now, what's the coin, okay? Right? So the, the coin in Ethereum land, where we are right now, is an ERC-20 Jasmine. You can verify this by going to Etherscan. You can look up the entire supply. It's all there, right? What's the coin on the Jasmine blockchain? There isn't one. There's nothing. There is nothing there. No coin at all. Okay. So we have a brand new blockchain with no coin, right? Wallets. Is there a specific wallet right now on, on, on Ethereum land here for us? No, there is not. There has never been. There is no Jasmine wallet. There is no wallet released by Team Jasmine that you move your ERC20 Jasmine into and um, it functions in the way that they want it to. Remember, we're extremely limited by the 30 transactions per second, okay? Why, why would you develop a wallet uh, when you're this far limited, okay? For the Jasmine blockchain, guess what? We're going to have something referred to as the Jasmine super wallet. Have I seen the super wallet? I have not. Uh, has has any picture of it ever been released? 
Not to my knowledge. How do I know it exists? What I know is that Hara specifically has brought up the Jasmine Super Wallet through AMA. He's also ironically brought up the Jasmine blockchain through AMA. However, the team had never officially announced it until now. All right. Now, something else to think about here is transaction cost, right? So on Ethereum, transactions are extremely expensive. Why are they expensive? Again, it goes back to our limitation because we can only do 30 in a second. That's why they're so expensive. If we could increase that tr transaction number, you know, a thousand times, um, the cost would go down significantly. So how are you going to, as Jasmine, market a new technology, this PDL, you know, Platinum Data, Edge AI, how are you going to market this if it's extremely expensive to use? How are you going to sell that? What's your sales pitch? That, well, ignore the cost. You can't do that. You can't ignore the cost, right? So what do we do here? On our current blockchain, the cost is high, right? What's the solution? The Jasmine blockchain, where the cost is low, right? Now, recapping a little bit. So reasons to create your own blockchain. Number one, increase throughput, your transactions per second. We have to do this for business to business and retail for scalability, okay? Number two, those transactions need to be cost effective, right? They need to be low. They cannot be, have a high cost to them or th the idea, the premise of it never works, right? Number three, this also, by having your own blockchain, brings development to the ecosystem, right? So devs, developers, uh, want to come develop the Jasmine ecosystem, and they do this uh, through this through Jasmine Lab, facilitated through Jasmine Lab and the Jasmine Grant. Um, over the last six months, we've seen a lot of different announcements about Jasmine Lab and Jasmine Grant, and they don't make any sense. They don't really resonate with anybody. You know why? Because they don't apply to Jasmine in the current way that we see it in the Ethereum blockchain. Where they do apply is to the Jasmine blockchain, all right? This is where we develop the ecosystem, right? Now, reasons to create number four, bring utility to your coin. The current coin, Jasmine coin, has no utility, none, all right? Um, that's the problem. That's a problem, all right? There's, there's really no use for it other than to buy it, sell it, or hold it. That's it, okay? What bringing utility means, like I said here, game theory slash rewards, right? Who wants to get rewards for holding Jasmine coin? I know I do. I've been holding it a long time, as, as, uh, as have a lot of other people. Um, voting, right? So in other projects that have created their own blockchain, and you hold it within their wallet, right? You're securing their network. Um, you then get something like voting rights where you can vote on proposals. Could that happen with Jasmine? Maybe. Uh, might it not? Maybe not. I don't know. Um, but that's just another option there, right? So you, you bring utility to a token that's never had utility before, right? And number five, a great reason here is that this increases community engagement. Now you're no longer being asked to simply just buy it and hold it, but you're asked to buy it and then participate, right? And if you participate, there could be additional rewards for you. You could be incentivized, okay? Now, I noted here that the natural progression of the Jasmine ecosystem follows this order. And the reason I, I know this and why, you know, I said earlier, the cart is maybe ahead of the horse is that I've seen this happen in numerous other cryptocurrencies. Jasmine is by far an anomaly. They are following the same playbook as numerous other cryptocurrencies that develop their own blockchain, right? This, this is sort of a blockchain progression. Um, this is where in the past I've said, you know, Jasmine could use a blockchain advisor, right? 
somebody from the world of blockchain to explain that, hey, this is your next logical step. Here's where, you know, uh, 300 other th projects also went at the exact same point that you're at now, right? That, that's kind of what I'm getting at here. So the first thing they do, they create the Jasmine blockchain, right? In development, great. Number two, we create the Jasmine super wallet. What is that? That's, that's basically the, the interface, the interaction point between the community and the project, right? Jesse, you hold Jasmine. How do you do anything with it? Well, I need to put it in my Jasmine super wallet. And once it's in there, then I get the following utility things that are available to me, right? That's the point of the super wallet. This is your, your touch point with Jasmine, okay? Now, when you have that, currently, uh, all of our tokens are on the Ethereum blockchain. They're in Ethereum land. They are ERC-20 Jasmine. Is there any utility? No, there's none. On the Jasmine blockchain, will, would there be utility? Yes, there would. However, there's no supply, right? So what do you do? This is where the natural progression is to bridge the token over to the Jasmine blockchain and then it would technically become the quote, native Jasmine, right? That's it, native Jasmine. And all the other projects I've seen do this, that's exactly what they do. They bridge it, uh, and then eventually, the coins that they're selling on exchange, they get rid of the old ones, and they already convert them. So something like a Coinbase, you'd have no idea as a user, that, but you may be buying uh, the native coin, right? That's it. That's, that's how the whole thing works. And then what that leads into is number four, the data exchange token lockup. This is the thing that we've been projecting out for two years. Um, this goes back to that original chart, which showed the businesses locking up the coin. Uh, this is how the coin goes up in value, is those are taken out of the supply. They are, quote, locked up, right? This is where the overall price rises, the market cap rises. This is where if you're holding the coin, all, the value rises, right? All of it hinges on this. It all comes together in one picture, all right? Now, because the native coin um, idea was such a Pandora's box, let's say, <laughs> I went ahead and I made um, some questions here, right? So I wanna talk through these. So. First one, why can't we just leave the coin where it is as an ERC-20 token? Um, the reason why essentially is that the existing supply has no utility, right? As I said earlier, it can be bought, it can be sold, it can be held, that's it. Uh, you can't secure the network or earn rewards with the current token. Um, transactions. Uh, as I noted here, are limited to 30 plus or minus transactions per second. You have extreme limitations and you have no utility. So could could you leave it there? Sure you could. Yeah, we could leave it just like we have right now. But guess what? All those things that you want to happen, this one, two, three, four, what's the point? There's no point if you have no coin to use for utility, right? How does the coin get from chain one to chain two, right? So chain one would be Ethereum. That's where we're at right now. Chain two would be the Jasmine blockchain. Um, existing assets move via a bridge from point A to point B. That's it. They would bridge them over. That's a term that you hear a lot of times in cryptocurrency, bridge the asset. Bridge it from one place to another place. That's it, okay? Will the supply be increased or doubled by leaving the original coins on chain one and creating all new coins on chain two, right? No, it will not. A bridge would be used for all 55,000 plus holders uh, and incentivized via the new utility functions. Um, creating an all new supply would essentially restart 55,000 holders. It would restart your market cap that give or take is 100 and let's say $60 million, right? 
uh, you would not take your market cap to zero. You would not, uh, I, I would refer to this as nuking your own project, right? You would not nuke your own project uh, by creating a whole new set of coins on chain number two. That's, there's no incentive. There's no incentive to do any of this. Um, I'm not sure why people think that that could be a possibility because it's really not. It, it never was, it never has been. To my knowledge, I don't think I've ever seen a single project that has ever done that. Not one, not one time ever, all right? You simply take what you've got, your existing assets, your existing holders, and you move those assets to the new chain. You move it from point A to point B. That's all you do, all right? Now, are bridges manual or automatic? They can be both, okay? So if you were holding coins, let's say in a cold storage wallet, you're probably gonna have to do it manually through some sort of a manual transition page, right? If it is an automatically supported thing, in all the other coins, I've seen this exact same thing happen. Somebody like a Coinbase or a Binance, they come out and they say, yeah, we're, support uh, we're uh, supporting the token migration of whatever coin it is. You don't have to do anything. Just leave your assets here in, in your wallet, um, you know, on the centralized exchange and they'll just convert automatically, right? That's how it works. That's it. Um, then that's done. Eventually, at some point in the future, typically, uh, the exchange may, may no longer sell the original asset, right? Because why would we? What's the point? There's no utility for it. Uh, everything has moved to a new blockchain at that point, right? This is kind of where I was going with a native Jasmine token, is there's numerous reasons on why um, a native Jasmine token makes sense in the future. Um, the current coin, does it continue to make sense as time goes on? Not really, okay? It makes sense to bridge it to the new Jasmine blockchain. Now, as an ambassador, have I ever been given any information whatsoever about a native Jasmine token? No. Have I ever heard Hara on AMA talk about a native Jasmine token? No. Have I ever seen any way who represents Jasmine in an official way talk about a native Jasmine token? No. Those are all no's. This is simply Jesse, the person who follows blockchain, who has been following it for years, who, I guess, knows what a natural progression is uh, in this world of cryptocurrency. And this is how I see it going. Um, a long time ago, you know, I've talked about the wallet. We've talked about the blockchain well before they were announced. I announced DWF Labs a good month before the team ever announced it. Um, our team of, of researchers all over the globe has found things that we knew before it was ever officially announced. That's probably where this is headed. Probably. Um, now, again, could I be wrong? Sure. Uh, ultimately, could they say, hey, you know what? We're just going to leave all the existing supply on the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, we're going to move over to Jasmine blockchain and somehow make this work uh, without it. That doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, but if that's, you know, uh, where you think this could go, eh. Again, I'm only going based off of experience of following the cryptocurrency markets, of following, you know, the polka dots, the Cardanos, the, all these other projects that they all start on Ethereum. That's where everybody starts, right? Uh, but where you finish, eventually you grow out of it. It's it, like Ethereum is kind of like the neighborhood that all the friends moved into originally. And then as everybody gets older, people start moving on to different places because they outgrow the house in that neighborhood. That's kind of what happens here with Ethereum in particular. Um, this is one of the reasons with Ethereum why they're trying to go to Ethereum 2.0. They have to increase the TPS, right? The throughput, the scalability. They don't have any right now. There is no scalability. Um, you know, I mean, Ethereum came out, I want to say 2016, 2017, 
Uh, so it's been out a long time, right? Uh, originally, it was proof of work. Now it's proof of stake. Um, even if it's Vitalik himself has come out and said with Ethereum 2.0, he thinks they could get up to 800,000 transactions per second, right? Um, to be seen, right? To be seen, can they actually do this, yes or no? I don't know. Um, ultimately, with Jasmine here, the entire point of everything is that the Jasmine blockchain brings so much more functionality um, in a good way than what has existed to date, right? And it makes it so that for all of us holders who are holding the coin, uh, we may actually be able to use the coin for more than just holding it. We may be able to get some utility out of it, right? Um, that's where this is headed. Now, some of these questions, some of this stuff, are, believe me, these are things that I'm gonna ask in AMA, absolutely. Um, have I, I had the opportunity to talk about them yet? No. Do I have any open conversations with anybody at Team Jasmine? No, I don't. Um, I simply, as always, have followed it, continue to follow it. Now I'm in an ambassador role and I, I help to promote it further um, with, you know, whatever information I've, I'm given. Uh, what the ultimate, you know, ambassador program looks like uh, you know, it's still a little bit up in the air. I mean, for all of us who have, who are in it, uh, we, we don't know entirely. Right? We, we really don't know yet. Um, so I think there's still a few questions there, some things to be answered, some things to clean up. Uh, but, you know, our role as being part of this is to hopefully streamline some of these answers, right? Streamline. Uh, get ahead of these things before they come up, right? This is a great example of that. Uh, get ahead of something like this before it comes up. Is a native Jasmine on schedule? Yes or no? I don't know, right? We need to find out. Um, I think there's a lot of reasons for it, a lot more for it than against it. Um, but has anything ever been confirmed to date? Not yet. Not yet. But this is a start, right? So the ambassador program is a start. The announcement of the Jasmine chain is a start. And uh, where we go from here, well, you know, obviously some of us have some ideas of where we go from here, but uh, to be determined when and where that transpires. All right. So that's it uh, for today's video. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody out there. If you got questions, leave them in the comments. I'd be happy to comment about it. Um, otherwise, you can find me on Twitter, uh, my website, and elsewhere. And for a friendly reminder, this is Jesse. Keeping a real finance channel now. He says, you're back. Tells it like it is, right? It's something I'm going to continue to do, and I've always done. And I will see you on the next one. Have a good weekend.